Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Cecilia's Parish, and thank you for joining us this weekend. Today we observe the second Sunday in Lent. The readings for today's Mass may be found in the Missalettes on page 70. Please be respectful to the Lord in our midst and those around you by turning off your cell phone or placing it in the vibration mode so that it is not a distraction to others. Thank you for your consideration. The intention for our Mass this afternoon is for Dorothy LaPierre. Please stand and greet the Lord who gathers in our midst as he makes us one as the members of his body. the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all good afternoon everybody Dear brothers and sisters today we gather to celebrate the second Sunday of Lent my dear friends at the beginning of this Holy Mass let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, from my fault, from my fault, from my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us mortally by your word, that with spiritual sight may pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. 
Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your only beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by his horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did and not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Lord, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them, along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are celebrating the second Sunday of Lent. And as we do every year, on this day the church proclaims the gospel of the transfiguration. Jesus climbs the mountain with his closest apostles, Peter, James, and John, and he was transfigured before them. Then, as we saw in the scriptures, Elijah 
and Moses appeared and they were conversing, conversing with Jesus. Um, the version here that we are reading today, of course, is from the Gospel of St. Luke. And this version, unfortunately, doesn't say what they are conversing about. However, if we go a few pages back in our Bible, um, more precisely at the Gospel of St. Luke, we're going to see that St. Luke reveals that Elijah and Moses were actually talking with Jesus about something extremely appropriate for this season of Lent, and that's why we are reading this Gospel today. They three were actually talking about Jesus' death on the cross, the ultimate mission or accomplishment of Jesus. And again, that's why we reflect about this Gospel now during Lent, a time that is marked um, by the cross of Christ. Not only the cross of Christ, but also um, our human pilgrimage here on earth that is full of trials, tribulations, and sufferings as well. Okay, so what can we learn with this gospel of the transfiguration today? Right? What does this gospel change in us? Because in fact, the change does happen in us when we pay close attention to this gospel. The Holy Fathers of the Church, those great saints, uh, theologians who lived at the beginning of Christianity, um, they are the ones who insist that actually at the Transfiguration, nothing actually was changed in Jesus himself. No. They say that the change actually happened in the sight of the Apostles. The change happened in their eyes. Right? In other words, Jesus manifested to them something that they hadn't realized yet. The reality that in that man, God was present. That's what they see at the Transfiguration. Therefore, the miracle of the Transfiguration is not even the Transfiguration itself. But the miracle that the Transfiguration reveals was the fact that God hides His glory and become man to suffer our human condition. That's the miracle that should leave us speechless um, when we read the Transfiguration. The reality that God the Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, emptied himself, hid his glory in such a way that he came to suffer our own human conditions. How is it possible? How is it possible that God Almighty renounces his own divinity to suffer in our place? So again, the miracle is not to realize that Jesus is glorious. The miracle is in this God who experienced our sufferings, humiliating himself. The fact that God Almighty felt the cold night of his birth, the fact that God Almighty felt the hot days of his public life's journeys and pilgrimage here on earth. The fact that God felt hunger when he said, give me food. And the fact that God felt thirst at the well when he said, give me a drink. God himself humiliated himself to suffer from us, from, to suffer for us, hiding his glory. So my dear friends, when we, are, when we realize this, we can see something here that gives us some consolation on the season of Lent. Not only the season of Lent, but gives us consolation when we go through suffering here on earth. And let's be honest, we go through more suffering than anything else. 
even the rich people goals go through more suffering than pleasure in life in the same way as Jesus is we are also beloved children of God not by nature of course but by adoption we are children beloved children of God and we despite some moments of glory that we have here and there in this pilgrimage here on earth we live daily the Lent of this world sufferings trials tribulations so our moments of glory and consolation are extremely extremely momentary we have few here and there just like the transfiguration of Jesus was extremely momentary in the life of Jesus right we live Lent not only in these 40 days of penitential liturgy that we are going through right now but throughout our lives our life our entire life could be called Lent right? the same way we are not alone in the lives of all the Saints of the church for example many were the moments of mystical glorious experiences where for a few moments some of the Saints felt what heaven was like and they looked like divine glorious luminous beings because of those moments of divine experience but we know how the life of the Saints were they were the ones who most suffer most of the time they lived a very arduous life of suffering pain humility humiliation torture because they knew that they were only imitating the life and the path of their Lord and Savior and they knew yes glory was momentary here on earth but in the future in our next life glory will be our reality for eternity to come so my dear friends I think the message for us today is if you're suffering if you're struggling if someone who you love is suffering in such a way that there's nothing we can do remember glory is about to come in heaven we were not born for this this is just a passage we are going through right let's remember that for us Christians should be an honor to suffer because that's the same path that our Lord Jesus and Savior walked on if we are not suffering it means that we are not following his footsteps if the church is not suffering it means the church is not following Jesus' footsteps. We suffer here to live a life of glory in heaven. And how good it is to feel good. How good it is to experience those moments of glory. It feels good when everything goes right in our lives. Because we have the same tendency as St. Peter in today's gospel. That's why he wanted to make tents and dwell on the mountain it was good to be there he said to Jesus it was wonderful to see God Moses Elijah face to face of course it is good it's good to experience the love of God but we have to remind ourselves we are not in heaven yet so we have to come back down from the mountain because the love that we experience in moments of glory must be passed on we must pass it on to others that's why God gives us every day the opportunity to love in return and we only love through giving through sacrificing ourselves to others to being helpful to others to loving others as Jesus loved us to suffer for others as Jesus suffered for us so Lent, my dear friends, must be this moment to transform our pain and suffering in opportunities of love. Let's not be overcome by the temptation to build tents, 
to think that we are doing good when we are not suffering because it's the opposite let's remember that this world is fleeting and our final home needs to be built in heaven where then and only then we will be definitely transfigured I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as man, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends, let us now bring our prayers before the throne of grace, confident that they will bear and answer in the name of Jesus. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church, that God's generosity to Abraham and his descendants might motivate us to share our blessings with those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, hear our, prayer. our prayer. We pray that all the nations on earth may find blessing in their people as God promised Abraham and value even the least among them as the handiwork of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that the world may be transfigured by the presence of God, becoming a world of perfect justice, mercy, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Gabriel de Francesco, for Roger Mayer, and for all those who have died recently. And at this Mass, we pray for the repose of the soul of Dorothy LaPierre. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray also for all of our own personal intentions, which we reveal now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of tender mercy and love, hear our prayers and keep us always in your loving care. Amen. to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In Him there is no darkness at all, the night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. 
see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear star of righteousness, shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. darkness at all, the night and the day are both alike. The land is the light of the city of God, shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Pray now, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice, O oh Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify our faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right it is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it for it is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, this we, cup pray, we, we proclaim pray. your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread through all the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Today we remember Dorothy Lapierre. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With Oh, God, you take. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Eat 
this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Trust in me and you will not thirst. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We do have a couple of important announcements. Our Lenten mission, Journeying with St. Joseph, will begin on Thursday of this week. Please join us for the next four weeks, each Thursday, after the 5.30 p.m. Mass, as a way to deepen our Lenten experience this year. St. Cecilia's is also running our annual food drive, as well as a loose change drive during Lent this year. Please see the bulletin for more details on how you can participate in both of these important activities. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Yes. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. As we receive this glorious mysteries, I'm sorry, bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week, everybody. God bless you. to the living front your church must journey Lord baptized in grace in grace we need by your most holy word from desert to the mountain top in Christ our way we Transfigured be.